What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about fructose and fatty liver disease, specifically non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. When I was prepping for my debate with Dr. Tro, one of the areas of research that I really dug into was the effects of fructose on non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now, a lot of low carb, uh, anti-sugar people will say that fructose increases non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. If you look at the research, that's true when fructose is overfed, but that's also true of fats being overfed, of um, general carbohydrate being overfed, of just calories being overfed that will increase levels of liver fat. What we really need to look at is when calories are controlled, does fructose increase fatty liver calorie per calorie more than other nutrients? And what these people kind of hang their hat on as proof that fructose causes non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is really one study um, that was done by Lustig and I think Schwartz, where they took kids with, uh, I believe uh, were obese, and had them reduce their fructose intake, but didn't really have them change anything else. And they saw that after a week, their levels of liver fat went down. Now there's a couple problems with the study. First thing, there was no control arm. Now, why is the control arm important? When you're giving people instructions to reduce fructose intake, most of that, I think a lot of that came from sugar sweetened beverages. They're drinking less beverages containing high fructose corn syrup, probably causing them to actually just do other healthier things as well. And that's why you need a control arm so you can randomize and control for some of these variables. Now that doesn't invalidate the results, it's just a limitation. Further, it was only one week and also, the, they said they were at weight maintenance, but they actually did lose uh, body weight. So there's that confounding variable. And then more so than that, there was a meta-analysis of studies looking at fructose and liver fat when calories were controlled. And the meta-analysis, which is a study of studies, essentially looking at the summation of the research, showed that fructose at energy balance does not cause liver fat accumulation compared to other carbohydrate. And as far as like low carb versus low fat, there was actually a meta-analysis that showed that, uh, or no, sorry, it wasn't a meta-analysis. There was a study that looked at low carb versus low fat and found that the low carb group actually increased liver fat more than the low fat group. I'm not saying that a low carb diet is gonna make you increase liver fat. Mostly you only have to worry about that if you're overeating on calories. One of the other things I think it's important to point out is nutrients don't exist alone in isolation. It's also about what you replace it with. Many of the people who are claiming that fructose causes fatty liver disease also are people in the low carb community who downplay the effects of saturated fat. They say, oh, saturated fat's been unfairly demonized and you don't need to worry about it. And that debate continues onward. Just ask everyone on Twitter who tells you saturated fat doesn't matter. In a study that compared the two straight up where they either overfed fructose or saturated fat, and actually they overfed more calories from fructose, slightly more, they found that saturated fat increased liver fat 70% more than fructose. So even if we disregard the meta-analysis demonstrating that fructose doesn't cause fatty liver disease as long as you're not overeating calories, even if we disregard that, if you're looking at what nutrients are going to give the most problem when it comes to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, saturated fat is way worse than fructose. Fructose increased uh, liver fat in this study by 16%, uh, whereas saturated fat increased it by 86%. And there's also some other studies showing that saturated fat increased it by like 60% compared to polyunsaturated fats and, and whatnot. So it would have more weight if these individuals who were claiming that fructose was so bad for you because of fatty liver disease could also show that fructose was worse th for you than saturated fat, whose effects they tend to downplay. Somebody like Lustig and some of these other people who are very uh, low carb proponents. Again, if you're so worried about fatty liver disease, you cannot say fructose is truly bad without acknowledging that saturated fat is way worse for liver fat. Now again, I'm not saying that you should eat fructose. I'm not saying you should eat high fructose corn syrup. I'm not saying that you can't eat saturated fat and improve your health. That's not what I'm saying. 
What I'm saying is when you compare things straight up, fructose in absence of a caloric surplus does not appear to increase liver fat independently of calories. And there was one study recently where they took eight healthy people and had them add 150, 150 grams of fructose on top of their normal diet and they monitored them for eight weeks and they saw no metabolic abnormalities from this and the people were at energy balance. So again, I'm not saying you should eat fructose. I'm not saying you should eat high fructose corn syrup, anything like that, but don't be worried about a fatty liver from eating an apple. You're gonna be fine. If you're worried, if you're somebody who suffers from non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, the things you can focus on, exercise, uh, lose weight, and probably limit your saturated fat intake will help you more than anything else. Now, could you limit your fructose intake if you're worried about it? Sure, but only as a means to limit your calories. All right, guys, you can check out the studies that I cited in the description if you want to check them out for yourself. Also, make sure you check out my debate with Dr. Tro. We put that up a few weeks ago. Um, I think you guys can learn a lot from that. Click the links in the description. If you like these videos, support us, buy our educational materials, download our app, and I'll catch you next week.